welcome. I'm Krista Gibson, the publisher of NewSpiritJournal.com, and this is our video series called Keeping It Real, where we bring you practical information that you can apply to your life. This begins an eight-week series with Eagle Song Gardener, and what we're going to be discussing for these eight weeks are a variety of herbs. Eagle Song has been working with herbs, growing herbs, teaching all things herbs <laughs> for the last 30 years and has a research project in Monroe, Washington, where she actually has participants come out and she offers different classes and that sort of thing. Plus, she is the co-creatrix of the Pacific Women's Herbal Conference. Um, so she really knows about herbs and she's going to be sharing that information with you right here. So let's talk just for a second. So it's an eight week series focused on cultivating wellness by using simple local herbs. So you're gonna learn how to identify each herb using simple botanical patterns, learn how to make simple herbal preparations in your own kitchen, and encourage common sense strategies to bring herbs into your life with a whole healthy approach and learn how you can use herbs for vitality and longevity every day. Now, what are the eight herbs you're going to be learning about? There's nettle, dandelion, comfrey, oat straw, linden, marshmallow, St. John's wort, and motherwort. So every week for the next eight weeks, you're going to be learning about one of these herbs. Thank you so much for joining us. And let's just jump right into this and let's sit and have our first session with Eagle Song. Good morning, Eagle Song. How are you today? Hey, I am so good. It's springtime. The energy is way up in the world and the green is everywhere. I am really excited to be back with you, Krista, and look forward to talking about dandelion. Absolutely. And let's just jump right in and right. tell us all things dandelion. We're all it's ears. <laughs> okay. So I, I love to, to begin with dandelion because dandelion is an herb that is so useful to us as human beings. But our program is called Health from the Ground Up. And so we also want to know, what does dandy dandelion do in the ground? What, mm -hmm. Why is she here? Besides mm -hmm. what we could use her for, she also has function in the earth. And learning about her relationship with the place she's growing actually informs us a great deal about how this plant is going to be beneficial to our health. Okay. And I think that's an important link mm -hmm. to remind us that plants are here for their own purposes. Right. Agree to work with us. And, um, and because we can go get them, then we need to really understand how we can best tend them right. so they'll always be here with us. Wow. And dandelion is a good one to start with because they're everywhere. Yeah, a very simple plant <laughs> to identify. Although one thing people do have trouble with it, one way to identify the, the dandelion is that dandelion always has just one flower and one stem. Oh, I did and not know so that. Okay. It makes it very easy because there's a look-alike dandelion that's called hairy cat's ears that lives here in Washington where I live and it has multiple flowers on the stem so and it also blooms later dandelion blooms early in the spring usually in uh, late March early April and so um, every part of the dandelion is edible although you would be hard-pressed to eat the seeds yeah. but my geese yeah. love them right <laughs> so, so they, they actually nourish a lot of, of other life in fact these dandelions are in our dooryard garden, and that's why I can show you a dandelion because the geese have taken care of the whole croft uh -huh. and kept dandelions at bay. But they're uh -huh. just eating down. They eat the green part like this. Mm -hmm. And then this root, look how deep the root is. And this, yeah. is the, this one is not really a big dandelion, but this root goes down into the soil. It breaks open the earth. Water and nutrients can go down into the earth and then she comes up, she, she brings nutrients up. So this is, I've always called dandelion um, a plant plow. A plant the, plow? Yes, the dandelion helps the earth to turn okay. with no metal. And so how does that happen? Well, the how, do, how does the dandelion work? Well, here we have one, look at this. I got a bunch of these this morning. But they're hooked together right here uh -huh. because this dandelion had been cut off at some point at this place 
and it sprouted too. Oh, so that's okay. why it's so hard to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. So half, and I don't know if you can see these, but see these all these feeder hairs, uh -huh. feeder roots. Yeah, this is where our um, all life is dependent on these feeder roots, because through these roots, microbes actually dissolve the minerals into solution and the feeder roots absorb them and then they go up into the tops. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so all of that, that what dandelion does for the earth is exactly how dandelion works in us. The deep root takes the nutrient very deep into the body and goes, the root goes directly to the liver. Mm. And so okay. the liver is, is the, the organ that really helps us live. Right. When your liver is really working, you are alive and well, <laughs> and you want to get up every morning. Right. If you're sluggish in the morning, you might end up needing dandelion. Mm -hmm. So the root is, um, I always dig the whole dandelion. And then, um, well, no, that's not true. When I just want the tops, I cut the root off mm -hmm. because I know it's going to grow again and again and again. So this is a generous plant. Right, sounds like. Feed all kinds of creatures, and every animal I've ever raised loves dandelion. Huh. So the greens can be used in your salads and many ways that way, but the root, when we cut this root off, like this, it can be dried whole. Um, you can chop it and mm -hmm. dry it that way, and you can also chop it and make it into tincture, and we use 100-proof uh, vodka. And that is the way to tincture it. So you would fill up a jar. We have a small jar here. I'm actually going to make a little dandelion pickle in the jar. But you just fill up any jar full. Okay. And then fill it up again with the vodka. Okay. Put on your cap. Right. And dandelion root tincture. Macerate it for a month. One okay. cycle around the moon. Uh-huh. And then you end up with a beautiful tincture you can use any time you want. So, so how would you use how would you use a tincture? Yeah, the tincture is um, that I think eating the plant is the absolute best way to get the dandelion energy into our lives. But the tincture is great in the middle of winter. You might want something um, to help your liver, support your liver. Mm -hmm. And of course, remember alcohol is not great for your liver. Right. But this is a way you can add the tincture to water and drink it um, best, like before uh, you eat a meal. So mm -hmm. it actually the body to receive food and helps the digestion the whole idea of the digestive system slowing down and what dandelion can help improve is um, is supported through the use of dandelion in as many ways as you can get okay. it in your body tincture okay. just gives you a way to use it in the winter okay or if you're traveling and you yes. need to be with you you can have it so it's a very handy right. uh, preparation and remember you are the most important ingredient in your herbal preparations. <laughs> you can't buy anything on the shelf that has you in it. That's true. That's true. And That's so true. I love to teach people how to make the herbal preparations on their own because you become really connected. You become connected to the plant. Right. You actually become more connected with yourself when you start right. to learn about the plants and where they live. Mm -hmm. Become more connected with the world and when we connect that way with things it's kind of hard not to fall in love mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True. and we will always take care of the things we love right and so, so dandelion um oil oh, the leaf we're gonna make now the dandelion pickle okay so i have the whole dandelion the root and the tops and the buds all of that and I am just going to chop it all up into bits. And I usually make about a gallon, four quarts of this in the springtime because I use it throughout the whole year. Mm -hmm. And it goes into my uh, cooking a lot. Like if I'm making a soup or a stew, and you know, you kind of have that flat flavor. It just mm -hmm. doesn't get it. Mm -hmm. You put tablespoons of dandelion pickle into your soups mm. and stews get all the nutritive benefits, right. all the function that it's going to really work in your body to um, to make the body work better, and it's going to make your super stew taste better. Okay. So, so you're just chopping this up in small pieces? 
Yes, you can see I just oh, minced. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, minced it. Yep. Chopped. Really, minced would be smaller. You're right. Then yeah. it goes into the jar. Okay. It, and we've got everything. We've got the flowers. We've got the root. Right. We've got the leaves. So this is a whole dandelion vinegar. Hmm. And, uh, well, actually, it's going to be a whole dandelion pickle. If I was going to make an herb vinegar like this, mm -hmm. I would strain out the plant material. But because I know that this is going to be a great thing to add to my soups and stews, I want the plant material to be in it. So we have the jar. Mm -hmm. We now take vinegar, apple cider vinegar. Be careful not to get apple cider flavored vinegar. Ah, uh, okay. Be sure it's true apple cider made from apples. Mm-hmm. Again, here we did. We filled the jar up once. Now we're filling the jar up twice. And we cap it. You want to have a non-reactive cap okay. when you're making beer so you don't dissolve the metal into your preparation. Right. And notice I call these herbal preparations. They're not really remedies. Right. And yet they are. Right. But remedy implies there's something wrong, and preparation is just something you're making for the kitchen. That's and a really good distinction. Yes. <laughs> it's so yes. funny because when we prepare well, then life seems to run better, right? Right, right. Absolutely. So bringing these preparations into daily life is fun, exciting. It gets us outside. We play. And actually, last weekend, or I don't know, last week sometime yesterday is my uh, – everything that happened before right now was yesterday. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it has, hasn't happened yet. That's tomorrow. Right. <laughs> and the rest of it is detail. And so yesterday I was over visiting a friend, a next door neighbor, and she offered me a cup of roasted dandelion beverage that she had. She bought commercial dandelion root, roasted it in her oven, and then actually um, put in cinnamon and, and decocted it by boiling it on the stove. She said for about 10 minutes. And I was kind of dubious which is not a good thing to say, but I, I had tried this myself before and not always liked it, but uh -huh. I tell you what, it was delicious. Mm. It was the most wonderful thing. So here's this, um, my neighbor's young woman, and she has a beautiful little garden behind her house, and so I work in her garden with her, and she works over here with me, and we have a lot of fun that way, and she has one raised bed that is just totally dandelions, mm. and for the last three years, she's just sort of poo-pooed the, you know, but you know what? This year, she is on it. That's great. She now knows those dandelions are a lot more than just a weed that grows in the field or some obnoxious thing that's messing up her gardening. Yeah, to get rid of. Yeah, yes. just something to get rid of. Yeah. So the other thing is we don't use that principle of getting rid of. Right. We really like to think about we add on. Mm -hmm. We add to. Right. And that leaves the getting rid of part up to the natural forces. So with the dandelion root going to the liver, who is the great organizer of your uh, what you should keep and what you should let go. Right. <laughs> that, when we nourish the liver, the liver can do its job, and it makes all the distinctions necessary. No cleansing, no, no toxins. Right. Just the liver doing its job because we gave it the nutrients and the support it needs to do that. Right. right. Sounds awesome. I know, right? And so then we've got dandelion oil. What do you do with oh. the flowers? So dandelion oil, look at the color in that. I know, it's this really pretty. Fantastic, yeah. And so this was made last year on the 11th of April. It's good to date your preparations. Yes. Mm. that you can. You, it actually gives you what I call the, the book of shadows, uh, which is okay. everything that happened yesterday. Right. <laughs> and if it's dated, then you go, oh, right, Um, in the 11th part of... April, it's a good time to watch for dandelions because they're going to be in bloom. That's when right. I made this. Right. So you can look at your shelves and you'll know just when you need to do uh -huh. what. That's a good idea. So this one, um, really good for the skin. Mm. Really softens the skin, makes it more pliable. And you know now we have this virus that people are concerned with. Right. And oil is one of the things that disrupts the virus's protein shell. Mm. So when we fill our skin, we actually create a, a barrier, a physical barrier that helps protect us hmm. in a different way than persistent cleansing. Right, right. 
actually allows our body to get soft and emollient, you know, and smooth and soothing, right. really nurtures and nourishes the skin, which is one of your best immune defenses. So we want to boost the capacity of our of our immune system. Absolutely. Yeah. So what is your carrier oil? What is the base oil? I just use plain olive oil. Oh, okay. All right. Unfancy, That's easy. Not burden, mostly because I don't like smelling like a Greek salad when I put right. on my oil. <laughs> so one great story with the dandelion um, is that uh, we had an eight-year-old here one time that was actually the best goat milker who has ever been on the croft. She uh -huh. was amazing and she was also a very adept herbalist even at eight years old she went out one year and she harvested the dandelions and she made a beautiful oil like this and she was ho humming about what would she do with it and one morning she came in and she said you know dawn has a lump in her udder when i'm milking i noticed it i'm gonna take that dandelion oil and put it on her udder and see what happens hmm. eight years old mind you. wow yeah so a week later she came and she said, you know, it seems that that, uh, that lump in, in Dawn's udder has gone away. Wow. How cool so is that? Cool, because this is absolutely wonderful for breast massage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It really works with women as well as boats. So, um, so how much do you, how do you make that? How many, uh, what do you put in it and how long do you stew it? And... Flowers, these beautiful flowers. Uh -huh. Fill the jar. Okay. Add add your oil right and you can use different kinds of oil uh -huh. i prefer olive oil but you can use other kinds right and um and then this one you want to put uh you don't want to seal it with a tight lid because you have fresh plant material in the mm -hmm. oil so you over it a, a net of some sort and then put your ring back on like this mm -hmm. then the oil can actually breathe mm -hmm. It allows the moisture to evaporate. Right. And you leave it that way for about a month and okay. you stir it every day for the first week. Then you stir it twice a day or twice during the week for the next three weeks and then strain it. Okay. And, and then and you don't have to, you can just put the lid on. You don't have to do, I mean, that'll keep it. It it's keeps, just, just putting the lid on. It won't get rancid or, okay. No, well, it, it, I gave it about a year. Okay, all right. The truth is we actually left this with the plant material for a year, and we just pressed it two weeks ago. Hmm, okay. And it's cool. So these are just guidelines. Yeah, of course, and right. I'm not really good at following rules, so I always have to, <laughs> you know, say you can't do it, then I have to find out how I can do it. <laughs> And so just play. I just want to encourage people mm. to play. We're going to use, oh, and this is actually Herbs for Health. It's right. a series. Right. And but, um, what I'm bringing to you in this series are herbs that are nutritive, tonic, and they're not dangerous. They're all safe herbs. They help to build and strengthen the body's uh, processes. Mm -hmm. And so I really encourage people to play. Well, let me ask you a question. Okay. Because I, I think mm -hmm. some people will be wondering this, like let's say that you're taking numbers of prescriptions or drugs or something that the doctor has given you and you need to take them for whatever reason. If you right. want to start taking herbs internally, should you check with your pharmacist? Kind of make sure there isn't an interaction of some kind or would well, that be that's wise? Why we're, the, the herbs that we're using fall into the category of food. Okay albeit special foods, right. in the sense that they really help the body to gain traction in being more healthy. Mm -hmm. And so they're not really going to interfere with medications. Okay. These right. are herbs that are, are really more food-like, and you can do these things. If you want to ask your pharmacist or your doctor, you can, and they will tell you they probably don't know. Yeah. Because okay. they're not herbalists. And Just so like I about the drugs that they're prescribing. Exactly. But we have found over 40 years of using the herbs I'm going to share in Herbs for Health in this series of eight, that these herbs are not, any cases of interaction has not been found, so they're really easy to take into your diet. Get comfortable. 
-hmm. just like your friends you know you want to be with them for a while and you get to trust them and the more you're with them the more you get to know them right and that's exactly how these plants work right so this is a really great place for um, your body doesn't know if it's a beginner or an expert mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's gonna take the nutrients out of the plants and use them the best way it needs to because the plants are global in their um, delivery Okay. Drugs are targeted one, right. Right. and so the plants actually will do a lot of uh, the dandelion root is really helpful to to help the body move out the parts of the drugs that are no longer useful. So you could you know you don't you know the metabolism works better. Right, right. So oftentimes what they find is the drug works better, so they have to reduce the dose. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of a good idea. Yeah, absolutely. So I just say if, if anybody has the least concern about that, do talk to your pharmacist or doctor. Because we're not here to prescribe. We're not here to do well, any of those things. So if you no. have any, any concerns, talk to your health professional. So absolutely. we're coming to the end of our first, our first session here. So um, if people want to get in touch with you in between classes, they want more information, what would yeah. be the best way for them to get in touch with you? And what is your website? Maybe that's okay. the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what. My website is eaglesong-gardener.com. Okay. If you come okay. over there, you can find a great recipe for dandelion wine oh, in our okay. blog. All right. Great. So eaglesong-gardener, eaglesong-gardener.com. Okay. We'll and, I'll, it, and it's on the screen so people yeah, can yeah. see it on the screen as well so they can do that. Well, thank you. Very interesting meeting um, Ms. Dandelion. And <laughs> so, our, so, it's always good to be with you, Krista. I so enjoy these interactions and I uh, look forward to seeing you around Nettle. Absolutely. So I'll see you next week when we will talk about Nettle. All right. Great. Take care. Thanks, Eagle Song. Thank